All right, so this is European Cervical Cancer Prevention Week and in March the HSE is going to offer another round of HPV vaccines to schoolgirls. Um, how can you get your message across at this stage? How can you halt the decline of people getting the vaccine? Well, the first thing that we want to do is, is to make sure that parents have the facts about the vaccine. There are a lot of there's a lot of information on social media and on local media and on uh, general media all over that is not factually based. And all the information that we provide is factually based. There is science to back that up. And it's not just us, as I said already. Our expert committee of the College of Physicians strongly supports this vaccine. They ha- the uh, regulatory committee has said that this vaccine is safe and effective, as have all the international bodies in Europe and worldwide. All continue to recommend that this vaccine is safe and effective. The main issue is that if we don't vaccinate girls, if the parents choose not to get this vaccine, we won't see the benefits of this vaccination. In Australia, where they have kept their uptakes high, they have halved the rate of cervical cancer. They have also reduced the rate of pre-cancers by up to 75%. We won't see those benefits unless girls are vaccinated. So we want to help parents provide them with the correct information to allow them to choose whether to get the vaccine. And when they are choosing whether to get the vaccine, they should consider where they get their information from. All the regulatory bodies, all the expert bodies, all say the same message, that the vaccine is safe and effective, that the vaccine works, it's effective, it prevents cancer. So parents need to look at the information that they are reading, see where the the basis for that information is, and, and then allow themselves to choose, we hope, to get the vaccine. We know that there was a lot of uh, media around the concerns that parents have and we would like to help and use this week, this particular week about cervical cancer to prevent cervical cancer. We want to use this week to help to tell parents that we will be sending more information to all the schools to per- allow them to any parent who wants to change their mind to get the vaccine for their daughter. All right, Dr. Brenda Corcoran, Head of the HSC National Immunisation Office and Consultant in Public Health Medicine. Thank you very much for joining us on that. It is 53 minutes to five now here on Newstalk. We, every day we discuss this topic, we get lots of uh, contacts and texts and, and emails from listeners who say that they have big problems with the vaccine and this time is no different, Chris. And just to give you a flavour of them, Louise said, this is the standard line that all doctors give in vaccines and yet talk to the parents of vaccine-damaged children. Huge coincidence that, coincidence that these girls develop CFS directly after being vaccinated. No vaccine is safe and no doctor can say that they are. And another person says, those of us who have refused the vaccine are not stupid. Would you say the H1N1 vaccine was safe despite all the people with narcolepsy? My daughters will have regular smear tests and won't have the vaccine. And it goes on in that vein.